What's up everyone? Uh, how are we doing? I got a little quick discussion here with you all because I talked about this topic fairly recently, but I don't think my um, true points were conveyed very well. Or maybe I had further follow-up thoughts about it since then. Um, and it's the idea that when we are in a job, a profession, a career, I think one of the most difficult things you can do is to try and get out of that career, adjust that career, change that career path. Now, obviously, it depends on your profession. But I was talking to some people recently, and they're looking at changing their career options, whatever it might be. And the common theme is the more you do something and the better you get at something, the more you become not only invested personally in that situation, but you have some weird responsibility to stay in that situation, despite the fact that you may have gone down that career path, I don't know, eight years ago, 15 years ago, not even knowing that that was the career path you wanted to do. And now you're in a path where you feel like you have to stay in that path, otherwise all that time is wasted. It's like this weird, downward cycle of uh, the more I stay in this career, the more I don't like it, and the more I stay in it, the more likely I am likely to continue to stay in it. And it's, there's that classic saying like a, you want to be an inch wide, a mile deep, meaning that you're very detailed or you're very understood and well versed in a specific topic. You are like an expert in that topic. But I think at times when you do something like that and you don't try and venture out to other horizons, you become very unadaptable. I know there's like, what's that famous book? Is it range? It's called where it's really important to have a wide variety of things because wide variety of things, wide variety of skill sets. Because nowadays in modern jobs, you're working with so many different aspects of business uh, in terms of life, what you're doing, that having a wide range of qualities and skills makes you a more valuable employee. Well, I think that's fine and dandy. I think it's really important to understand that we change as people. We change interests. We change um, wants and needs. I'll share a little example of myself. Is I am a strength coach by trade, a sports scientist. I spent my career reading and writing about strength and conditioning. And the more I was in and am in the strength and conditioning world, and I realized that I didn't like the extreme version of strength and conditioning. If you were to go all in on strength and conditioning and become a head strength coach at the highest level, that's not even a career path I wanted. I didn't really like strength and conditioning to that extent or what strength conditioning is at that level and so I was kind of in this weird career trajectory where if that's my end goal I don't even want that as an end goal what am I doing and so as of recent you've seen me take on more basketball players if you follow me I started to become more of a skills coach now we do lift we do train and I joke and say if you are a strength coach long enough you eventually become a skills coach um, but it's because I love the sport of basketball. It's a little more isolated to basketball, obviously, but it opens up a whole new avenue, potentially coaching, actually a team, obviously skills coaching, player development. Um, but then you also learn different aspects of marketing. There's a new avenue of trying to get clients in through the door. And so for myself, I'm a big problem solver. I like to do puzzles. I like to have challenges in my life. And I find that constantly expanding my portfolio of career options is an exciting, fun puzzle. Now, the thing about myself is I can do that because I am in a situation where I am self-employed. I don't have to answer to a boss. I don't have responsibilities and requirements that are laid out in a contract from an employer. And so I have the luxury to expand my horizons however I'd like. I could in theory, just start a whole new job and become like a car washer or window washer if I really wanted to. Um, I answer to myself. Not everyone has that opportunity. 
And so the way I think about this in terms of time allocation, if you ever are in a spot where you are stuck under an employer, I myself have been there, is you want to do 60, 70, 80 percent, probably more like 80 percent of all your efforts being a good employee, right? You really want to be a great employee. You want to spend time honing your craft and what whatnot. But then the other 20 percent of that time, seek out opportunities that are going to benefit you. Seek out opportunities within the workplace that allow you to develop new qualities and skill sets. Maybe the, the company you work with needs help with marketing. You're a strength coach. You have an opportunity to get your hands, um, you know, a hands-on experience with marketing and learning how to read uh, funnels or even not read funnels, make a funnel for sales, how to uh, read the analytics of like a, an email campaign. And while these all seem very, very kind of mundane skills, it's the aggregation of these skills that eventually develop you into a qualified individual for that specific area. If you want to be good at marketing, you don't just one day read a book and become good at marketing. You have experiences, you practice it, and you say, oh, when I did that email marketing campaign, I wonder what um, our, our average cost per click was, or our customer acquisition cost. And then you start to read about what customer acquisition cost is, and then you start to read about ways you can improve customer acquisition cost. And now next thing you know, you have a decent background in some level of marketing analytics. And you don't know if this is gonna be utilized in your current job, but there's an opportunity down the line that your job, or a future job, might require that as uh, a quality that you need to have. And so when I start to think about development of my trades, my skills, my qualities, I always want to be refining that 80% of what makes me good, play to your strengths, right? If your strengths are to make your money and keep you in business, make sure you keep on doing that. But if we just go 100% in, we're never going to build a bandwidth of skills that allows us to go in and out of different professions or find different career opportunities. Because if you take that 20% and you accumulate that over time, eventually you might take on a job which is 50-50, 50% of this kind of new skill set, 50% your strength, and then you actually have a new profession and eventually you start to develop this uh, opportunity in whatever field or career you might be in. And so it's some of the most helpful advice I can give someone who's trying to maybe eventually find their way out of a career or they like their career but they want something different in it. I've talked to a lot of people who just want to make wildly abrupt changes. I don't really think that's the best route to do it, personally. Maybe it is for you. I don't know. Um, but I think realistically, it's this slow accumulation of knowledge in a specific field. And then from that field, you begin to understand what areas you like in it and develop it. Because then you become validated in that. So like when I started training people, I didn't go out and train 25 individual basketball players right off the bat. I took a couple of kids. For, I actually trained my first client for free just so I could practice training them, develop the skill sets. What do I need to learn about this? And then I took a couple more on and I realized I wanted a group of individuals. And now my in-person training is all hybrid skills and strength conditioning. So I've slowly become the skills trainer that I would like to become. And now I can take that next step further. And maybe if I wanted to host a camp, I could host a camp or whatever it might be. But I've opened that door up and it wasn't like it was built in one day. It took time, it took a year to get there, but it was these slow steps in the right direction, taking advantage of opportunities. And then eventually when an opportunity you think is fit for you, you actually jump on it and you are qualified to actually handle it and succeed and do well in it. So that's kind of a, my short advice for people who are looking to maybe move within a career or change careers or do something along those lines because you always hear stories of people who just like I dropped everything and opened up a boutique shop and I'm so happy well that that's a big risk it really is a big leap and everyone says you need to take these big leaps and I don't really think that's true I think you can take these micro leaps these small steps and really actually get good at something before you actually have to make the full commitment to be all in on that something um, and so look at yourself what you're doing in your career some advice and just like some advice from me to you, whatever that's worth, is look at your career, look at what you're doing, look at where you are, do you like it, what don't you like about it, um, and then what areas could you possibly, or low, what areas are low-hanging fruit that you could possibly just go help with that would acquire new, help you acquire new skills to maybe get out of whatever profession you're in, or maybe develop new skills to allow you to take a, a similar 
job, but with different responsibilities, and eventually develop that into a role that you enjoy. So that's kind of my short, uh, I don't want to call it career advice, but my short uh, explanation of how you can develop unique skills and assets without having to give up on your strengths, um, without having to think you're stuck in this job, because when people just go all in on this one job, yeah, you get good at that one job, but that's all you're getting good at, and there's no uh, ability to expand that bandwidth of that job into other areas, and eventually you might be kind of pigeonholed into a certain position that you don't enjoy. So that's my advice. I appreciate you guys. Hope you enjoy. Feel free to subscribe and share. Take care.